So hey guys, my name my name is Abhishek and welcome back to Inuskrit. And today we will be talking about the monolith versus microservices. You guys would have gone through a lots and lots of textbooks, videos to understand this. And I would like to uh, explain this from my perspective with my experience that I come from and the different textbooks that I have referred to. So I would be talking about what is monolith, what is microservices, when to use what, what are the different pros and cons. Okay. So First, let me uh, take a step back and I would like to explain that all the uh, server-side applications, whether it be for a mobile app or whether it be for a website, we would be having some sort of layered architecture where we would be having a presentation layer. So presentation layer is nothing but something that the user can see, it, right? HTML, CSS, all those things. So that is a presentation layer where you are presenting your data. It could be as simple as the JSON response that you are presenting to your user, if the case be. And the business logic, so this is the core business logic that sits into your uh, system. The database access as you would be saving the state of the user, the different kind of data you would be sharing. So this is for that and the application integration if in case you are interacting with other application as well into your system. So the, this is uh, the maybe the layered architecture that usually all the systems do follow. So now coming back to what is monolith and what is a microservice. So monolith is nothing but let's say you have an application, you have a order management kind of system where a user comes in and he is able to browse through your uh, the list of products, the inventories, and he is able to place an order, make the payments for that. So we will be taking uh, an example of that kind of system here. So the monolith would be it would have a user maybe entity, the inventory management piece of. Uh, system and the order system and the payment system. So a monolith would usually contain all this code into a single uh, code base, maybe the UI as well into the single code base. So, and it will be interacting with a single source of data. So what is the, so this is how the monolith looks like. And, further, uh, and on the other hand, the microservices would look like something like this. The entities, the user entities, maybe user entity would also be interacting with a maybe different source of data as well. And the uh, inventory management system, the order, the payment, and the order might be talking to inventory and the payments and the, the user that comes in, right? He might be going through all the authentication authorization which the logic sets into the user uh, service. So this is the kind of architecture that monolith and microservices have. Now I would like to talk, uh, take a moment and talk about why monolith and why microservices. So uh, actually uh, when the, when you ideate some product, let's say you want to build a B2C kind of application, this kind of system, and you just have two members in your team. You don't have that much time also to, to go to market to uh, like uh, launch your product there and test test it and fail fast in case it has to fail. So you would want to, don't want to invest too much time into building that scalable architecture because you don't need it at this point in time and you don't have the bandwidth to do that kind of architecture. So in that, those cases, usually people start with a monolith. So what, uh, so they will be writing, there will be two, three people who will be writing uh, the code together, maybe building this whole system together. And the monolith has its own advantages that it is very simple uh, to make the changes into single system and then redeploy the changes. So all those kind of system people usually prefer in the earlier stages of their uh, development uh, cycle than when they are launching one product. But the problems that they try to face, that they start facing when this product uh, scales out, when there are hundreds of thousands of users who starts coming. So usually the different components here which are very much, you know, uh, not very much coupled and they experience a different kind of traffic. For example, the inventory management, for example, would have more of get calls. It is, it would have more of read traffic than the write traffic might be, right? The order system might have more write traffic and the payment system might have the external user interaction. So these are fundamentally different uh, in their use cases, how they would want to get uh, so there. But this would be very hard to scale as their characteristics, the scaling characteristics are different for different kind of use cases here. So that would become a problem uh, when the uh, your system grows. But in case of microservices, as all this, maybe the inventory service, the order service, the payment service, they are uh, written differently in a different code basis. So 
so you would be able to uh, scale them accordingly and the other very fundamental advantage that we have uh, from monolith to microservices is that a single uh, developer would have to understand this entire code base in order to make changes and it would be very difficult for him to uh, cover all the test cases and ensure that one piece of code does not affect the entire system. So that kind of problems also the monolith systems will have whereas the microservices the maybe the team focusing on inventory service versus order service versus payment service they just have to understand these 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 pieces and build them uh, right and it will be like uh, they would have more much more understanding of the impact of the code changes there uh, right uh, the other fundamental difference is that when you build a monolith and you try to stick with it you it would be very hard to adopt uh, new tech newer technologies because you will have to change the entire code base simply but in microservices you, these inventory order payments user service all these services can be written in different programming language different technologies can be chosen if inventory has a fun, more of maybe more read access and it needs caching etc etc so though that can be taken care of there order has specific kind of traffic coming in so those kind of optimizations can sit together there uh, when we have microservices in place so another fundamental question that usually people have when to go from monolith to microservices and why don't we want to start with the microservice architecture so i think that question i have already answered that uh, usually people don't have that much bandwidth and they do not have a high confidence that yes we'll have the uh, user traffic to grow the business and they would have uh, that much amount of money when the user uh, start coming but when uh, this system grows and the uh, start getting money they would want to uh, break uh, do much more hiring or to break the system and give it to different teams so that is where you should when the throttling starts to happen in a component your component is not able to scale uh, vertically well then you have to go to microservices and build this system which is uh, much more easy to understand for the different teams that work in and much more easy to uh, scale uh, one single component. So th uh, that's mostly it about monolith and microservices. We will be talking in depth about the problems that microservices has, the problem monolith has and the word, what are the different advantage advantages versus disadvantages for monolith and microservices architectures that, that we are looking at. So that we'll be talking in detail. So guys, we'll be talking about the benefits, drawbacks of monolith versus microservices. So talking about monolith first, so the benefits are that it is very simple to develop and deploy because there is single code base. People are easily making changes there and it is very easy to deploy one piece of code and package it together and put it on a server, right? It is simple to test. Uh, that means that you can, you just have to run this uh, system and test it. Uh, even if you are doing manual testing. So that is, that enables a simple testing. It is simple to scale horizontally. So when, when uh, so especially on this point that people might be thinking that uh, horizontal, what is horizontal scaling and vertical scaling. So we'll be talking in the further videos about what is that. But essentially the horizontal scaling means that you add parallel servers. So for example, you had your entire code base running on one server you can add more machines with the same capabilities and it would be scaled horizontally. So it is very easy because you just have to put this packaged code instead of one machine to five different machines. So that is easy to scale it uh, horizontally. The drawbacks that uh, Monolith brings in is this application is too large and complex to understand. So if a new member is coming into your team and he, so he would have to understand the entire code backs in order to make a very simple change so that is one drawback it the rede it redeploy entire app on each update so you need to redeploy your entire application with each small update even if you are changing maybe the error message then you'll have to redeploy this entire thing and you don't know what else will break if one change is affecting the other changes continuous deployment is uh, difficult so there is a process called CI CD continuous integration deployment so that is difficult here because several other peoples will be working on the same code base. It, it will be very difficult to uh, integrate that code together and then test it because you don't know what piece will affect the entire uh, the other pieces. So, uh, because of that, the continuous deployment becomes difficult. 
it is difficult to scale with conflicting resource requirement. So in a system like in the previous uh, display we had payments, inventory. So they might have different resource requirement. For example, inventory might have different, uh, might need more of reads than writes, whereas order needs more of writes and payments need more of third party in interaction. So the resource requirements for different components might be different, might be very different from each other and it will be very difficult to scale it for one particular uh, use case. The new tech adoption is also very difficult. So you, so this is one very important point that when you want to maybe say go from one version of one language to or maybe say another language or you want to switch the technology, it will be very difficult for the uh, monolith to achieve that because you will have to change the entire code base for that usually. Coming back to microservices, so the benefits here are that it is decomposed into simpler services. So it is decomposed with respect to the business understand, understanding business entities. So it will be very simple uh, uh, in terms of that and it will be very easy to understand and develop and deploy. So if the new members uh, get added to your team, they just have to understand that particular piece of the system and start developing uh, the things there it reduces the technological barriers. So this point. So uh, the different microservices, they might have been written in different uh, kind of uh, technologies and they can use different kind of data sources. One is using maybe see S the SQL, one is using the no SQL uh, kind of data sources. So that, and one is using caching, etc. So the, those kind of technology barriers are not there in the microservice architecture. Uh, there are independent deployments. So if you want to just make the changes into a piece which is related to inventory, you just have to deploy the inventory service, not have to deploy the entire system that reduces the risk actually. So can be scaled uh, independently. So like we said that uh, the conflicting resource requirement. So those kind of things, like for example, the one microservice which has more of read requirements, we can scale it accordingly and other piece we can scale uh, that accordingly. So can be scaled independently. Uh, uh, that's one advantage here. So there are several drawbacks as well of the microservice architecture uh, also. It's not that this is the perfect one perfect solution that we have got. Okay. So uh, the microservices bring in the complexity of the distributed systems. So when I say distributed system, it means that uh, the systems which have more interactions, so rather than interacting with one service where there will be function call to uh, access other capabilities here there will be inter process communication so there will be a lot of problems related to distri how distributed systems how the fault tolerance works there so we'll be having further videos on especially on distributed systems and the fault tolerance of microservice architecture so those problems are introduced uh, when you uh, have a microservice architecture you will be doing inter process communication uh, in a state what you have done you would have done you would have done a simple function call in a monolith architecture testing is also a bit complex because let's say there is one change which is uh, going and it spans around different microservices so you'll either have to run all those uh, microservices and then test it uh, if you want to do uh, the testing or if you even if you are doing the stubbing there you will have at least have to add the stubs there so testing is bit complex as compared to uh, the monoliths. Managing large number of servers is very difficult. So as you know that uh, microservices, they will have different kind of technologies, different kinds of servers. So a lot of automation, a lot of monitoring has to come in when the microservice architecture comes in because there will be a lot of heterogeneity in terms of how the servers are there. So this is pretty much about uh, monolith and microservices. So even if there, there have been some terms which you have missed in this video, you, you have missed to understand what is horizontal scaling versus vertical scaling, what is distributed system. So we will be talking about all of this uh, in our coming videos. Stick to this channel and we'll take you there. Yeah. Thank you.